Nothing has just released their brand new 3.0 software update based on Android 15. And folks, whilst the Android 15 update itself might be a little bit boring, nothing has taken it upon themselves to make it exciting with a huge update that brings about a massive visual overhaul. And I've got to say, it's definitely pretty spicy. Now, this is in beta at the moment, so it's early days, and as such, there are some bugs evident. There's also gonna be further changes going forward, but I thought that it'd be fun to showcase all the new changes that we've got so far, because there's a bunch of them. So, let's dive in. All right, the first big change that you're gonna notice is on the lock screen, and in particular, this huge in-your-face new clock here. Gone is the nothing dot style typeface, and instead, we have this serif-based font, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't love it. It's too big, the date has a mismatched font, and I actually find myself missing that old lock screen clock. Now, the good news is that we can long press the lock screen here and we'll get this option to customize our lock screen. And when we unlock the phone to do so, you can see that we get five new lock screen clocks to pick from. And along with the default option, we also get this dot style clock, which I don't know if it's my eyes or what, but this kind of looks a little unfinished to me and it's kind of hard to read. Then we have this wide analog clock, this much more plain looking clock with this at a glance style widget underneath it that nothing calls quick look. And then finally, we have this additional dot style option here, which is probably my favorite of the lot. But I've got to be honest, I kind of hope that these options are further refined for the final release. I also think they should give us some double lined clock options like what we get on Google Pixel phones. And I definitely think that they should also give us the old nothing lock screen clock style as well, just for those of us who don't love this much change in one go. Now, we've been able to add widgets to our lock screen on nothing phones for a little while now, but something else that's new is that we can now toggle this expand widget option, which actually completely disables our large clock here and essentially unlocks either two extra large widgets or eight extra small widgets, which is very cool. You could also leave this completely blank if you like, which means you can then theoretically use an app like KLWP to essentially show any lock screen clock style that you like on your lock screen, which is pretty great. And if you want a tutorial on how to do that, just check out the video linked up in the cards. Within this menu, we also now have the option to quickly change our lock screen shortcuts, which we could do previously, but via the settings menu. So this just makes it a little bit quicker. Oh, and in case you missed it, there is a slightly updated fingerprint sensor animation too, which is funny because it kind of brings back the nothing dot vibe here when nothing seems to be largely departing from it. And there is also a slightly new design if you happen to use a pin code setup as you go to authentication method. But with the phone unlocked, whilst there's no home screen changes visible in this update just yet, there have been some pretty hefty upgrades to the app drawer, which I am a big fan of. Now, by default, the app drawer does look fairly similar to how it previously looked, but the background color behind the app drawer now matches your system theme. It used to just always be black, but now there's this light color variant as well, which I think looks very clean. But then we also have this new section up here, just below the app suggestions row, which allows you to pin any number of your favorite apps, which I think is such a great idea. But nothing have then taken things a stage further. So if we tap this three dot icon up here, we can actually switch our app draw mode to this smart option. And this supposedly uses AI to automatically categorize your apps into folders. And if we're being brutally honest, this is essentially a direct ripoff of Apple's app library implementation on iOS, which honestly is one of the big things that really annoys me whenever I'm using iOS. I wish nothing would kind of do more of a hybrid iOS slash Android approach where you can manually set up folders instead of just relying on AI to auto sort them. So I can't ever see myself using this option in its current implementation, but I'm very grateful that we at least have the option to revert back to the default setting, which is great. And I also love that we can disable the app suggestions row too, which I find are often inaccurate anyway. Oh, and by the way, we do still have the ability to swipe our app drawer to the left to view our hidden app icons. And I'm really hoping that nothing doesn't remove this feature in the stable build because Carl hinted that they might prioritize Google's private space feature instead. But please nothing, if you're watching, don't remove this current implementation. Even if you do implement private space, just keep this as an option as well. From there, we've got possibly the biggest change of all, which is the new quick settings panel. And the most noticeable change at first glance is that we now have this beautiful light colorway when our phone is set to its light theme. And I gotta say, 
I love it. For far too long, we've had this very dark quick settings panel on all phones running an AOSP based ROM, which by the way, we do still have quite a similar look when the dark theme is activated, but I love that nothing took the plunge to change things up visually here when the phone's light theme is enabled. Then aside from that, you'll notice that whilst our Bluetooth toggle looks fairly similar to previous iterations, our network and internet tile have been broken up into these two separate pill style toggles. And then what's really neat is that everything in our quick settings panel is fully customizable. So if I tap this pencil icon, you'll see that we get the options to make the Bluetooth tile smaller, like all of the other toggles, or even this medium sized pill, like the internet tiles. And we can then drag and move any of our toggles around within this four by four grid configuration. All of our smaller tiles can be made into medium sized tiles too, which is nice. And there's also this new ringer slider tile, which when expanded into a medium sized toggle actually lets us quickly change our ringer profile modes with a single tap. And I absolutely love this. I actually kind of wish that they gave us the option to fill this entire page with toggles. Like I know that this space down here is for our music player, but the music player is already visible on the first swipe. And so does it really need to be visible on the second as well? Oh, and by the way, I think they need to work on the padding and sizing of the music player widget because something looks a little bit off about it. And also it looks like that fancy squiggly music player scrubber from Android 13 is missing with this update as well. So hopefully that gets fixed in the next update. Last but not least, as you can see, our brightness slider has a new design and has now been moved to the bottom here, which is fantastic. There's even now a toggle that lets us quickly activate or disable adaptive brightness, which is very much appreciated. My only request is for nothing to add the brightness slider to this first quick settings view as well, because I know that would save tons of us an unearthly amount of swipes each and every day. Oh, and while we're at it, why not add the settings and power menu shortcuts to this first quick settings view as well? Now, speaking of our settings menu, this is another area where you'll see a pretty big design refresh. And I've got to say, jury's still out for me on whether I like this change or not. Firstly, as you'll note, no more nothing dot font visible at all here. We've now got that fancy serif font up the top instead. And this is used for every single heading within the settings app. And whilst I get the refresh, I do kind of wish that nothing at least gave us the option to switch back to the old nothing dot font as well. You can also see that we have an updated layout with each section being placed into these little groups. That's fine. And then aside from design changes, there's also this new special features menu, which actually doesn't have any new features itself, but it brings together a bunch of the nothing exclusive features like their various experimental features, their various gesture options and their pop-up view feature as well. And speaking of their pop-up view feature, this has also gotten a much needed update. Now, when you launch an app into pop-up view and then tap on it, you get these two new shortcuts at the top, kind of like on a computer where you can either minimize the pop-up view of the app off to the side, or you can also quickly get out of the pop-up view by tapping the X button. You can also easily resize a pop-up window by dragging the corner like so. And if you drag it all the way out like this, it then expands back into its full view. And finally, for the pop-up view updates, there's also an option now to quickly activate the pop-up view from a notification. But I remember having a similar feature on Xiaomi phones in the past and I always accidentally activated pop-up mode when I didn't mean to. So I'll probably be keeping this option disabled. Oh, and back within the settings menu, there's also this new tips and feedback menu, which essentially plays host to a bunch of mini guides and walkthroughs showing you how to use the various features on offer. Now, aside from that, there's also a bunch of other smaller changes that nothing has added with this new update. We've got this new battery health section found under the battery settings menu, and this includes this new custom charging mode, which is pretty neat. There's also this new charging assistant option. And then under the system menu, there's now this new device diagnostics option, which among other things allows you to see the health and cycle count of your phone's battery. But by the way, this is not showing an accurate reading here at the time of making this video as I've charged this phone way more than the 20 times that it's suggesting. There's also some supposed improvements to some camera features, including reduced HDR processing time and portrait mode improvements. And the cameras supposedly perform better in low light now, though I'm yet to test any of this. So take those changes with a grain of salt. There's also this new reset button seen across various pages across the phone, like in the home screen customization page, in the quick settings edit page, as well as in the internet settings page, just to reset things back to default if you've gotten a little gung-ho and things have gotten out of hand with your customization. 
We also now have the ability to archive apps, which lets us save storage space by offloading an app rather than deleting it. And predictive animations are now enabled by default in any app that supports it. It also supports Android 15's new partial screen sharing and screen recording functionality, where you can record just an app window rather than your entire screen. Now, those are all the features that are live and ready to use with this specific update, but nothing did announce a bunch of additional features that'll be coming in a future software update, like an updated boot animation, new regular widgets, as well as these new shared widgets. And they've also got a brand new gallery app coming, which I gotta admit looks really dang cool. And then aside from that, as mentioned, this software update is in beta, so there's gonna be some bugs here and there, but to be honest, it's actually surprisingly pretty stable. However, right now, there's one pretty decent bug that I've noticed, which is that the phone keeps waking itself up when the display is off, which is not only super annoying for when you've got your phone sitting on your bedside table at night, but it also causes way more battery drain than normal, so perhaps this particular build is not quite ready to daily just yet. But that's it. Those are all of the changes with Nothing OS 3.0. And let me know down in the comments, do you like the changes that they've made or are you on the fence about them? If you enjoyed the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later. <laughs>